This is about to be stupid. Yep, there it goes. Hey! <laughs> There's that tree, and as you can tell, this is all bait right in here. And these lighter marks with the shadows right here, these are all big fish, so this is a good sign. Whoa! That's on. That was not loose drag either, holy crap. Yep. Uh-oh, this is about to be stupid. Yep, there it goes. Hey! <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh, we're hooked up. Ah. <laughs> Striper on top water, baby. On this light action reel. Whee! Come on, buddy. Come on, where you at? Get on up here. I know you ain't done yet. I know you ain't done yet. Come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> Blake and Wes have got a heron. Oh, that's a good one. Whoa. Oh, buddy. They're blowing up everywhere. Look at this. Daggum, I've got like a 20 pounder. How about that? Yeah, yeah, brother. Yee -yee. Well, guys, I don't know if this is going to make it in the video for tomorrow, but I'm out here catching bait. And uh, these stripers start blowing up on top, so I'm gonna come out here and catch them. By God. Whoa, whoa. This is about a 20 pounder right here on top water. Ah, oh, chill out. Chill out. There we go, baby. Damn. That's 20 something. Heck yeah, brother. Ow! Dang it! <laughs> Dang, that's about 25. Nice! Alright guys, while well, I'm out here by myself, and uh, I really don't have time to take pictures or anything, but there's that. About 20, 25 pounder. Very nice. They got their hair and undone. <laughs> Alrighty, I guess uh, let's release this big old girl. Oh, yeah. She's 20s for sure. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. See ya. Well, I was out here catching bait, and a couple buddies rolled up and they started throwing for stripers, so I figured I would. They got one and a bird so far. That was fun. Nice job. You got birded.
Rule number 10,000 while you're catching bait, bring a top water. <laughs> that was fun, I'm gonna try to do it again. All right, the lighting is probably dog dookie, but I may catch another striper, so I'm gonna leave this going. That was fun. That was about a 25 pound striper on 15 pound braid and this skipjack rod and reel. That was a blast and a half. I'm glad I brought the GoPro. I was just gonna come out here and just vibe by myself for a little while and relax because, you know, I work a lot outside of fishing and fishing, you know, was my place where I would just come and relax. And it still is relaxing when you're filming, but it is kind of, I'm always in the zone trying to get the best shot and the, you know, make sure the audio is right and just like everything else, trying to get it right for YouTube. And sometimes you just miss moments like this just to relax. So I debated on whether to read the camera or not. And I was just like, whatever, I'll throw it on. I'm not gonna film any of the bait fishing. I'm just gonna have a good time doing that. But if the stripers start busting, I'ma film it. And they did, and I got one. And it was funner than dang it. And I'm pretty sure that GoPro picked up all those fish busting everywhere. That was nuts. If I had Brian or one John or somebody else with me, Alonis, we would have doubled up. Chad, anybody. That would have been double, triple up. They were just going off. That was fun, fun, fun. Doesn't get much better. Look at that sun going down, guys. We're going on a catfishing trip tomorrow. I'm gonna get up real early before it gets 105 degrees and do a little catfishing. Then I'm gonna rest midday. And then we're gonna get back out in the evening with Brian and we're gonna chase some big flatheads after dark on Watts Bar. Not sure what I'm gonna do in the morning or where I'm gonna go, but I got a cooler full of fresh skipjack. I'm off tomorrow. And I'm ready to fish. So that's what we gonna do. I'm gonna cut her off here, guys, and I'll catch you bright and early in the morning about 4 a.m. Well, I absolutely lied about getting up early to go fishing this morning. I slept in. So this is going to be a night fishing trip or an afternoon fishing trip instead of an all day thing like I planned. I was just daggum worn out, guys. So uh, we got the big cat fever rods loaded. I don't know how spatially this works, but yeah, they're back there. And we got a whole bunch of new Okuma Komodo reels, baby. Here we go. These are the, the 400 size. Uh, a couple of these are the 470, which basically is just a higher gear ratio, and then a couple of them are the 460, which is a lower gear ratio. So basically, uh, less line comes in per crank on the lower one, so more pulling power. But sometimes, like you guys know, I do striper and muskie and a bunch of other stuff. You want different reels with different speeds because sometimes the fish want a fast bait and sometimes they want a slower one. So I've got both, and uh, that's what we're going to check out today. Now, along with some new reels, Big Cat Fever sent me some new Hellcat rods that they finally got back in stock. I mean, they have been selling these like absolute crazy because they're just awesome rods. Originally, I had a bunch of the black ones and I didn't get the, uh, the, the neon green or the orange ones. Just, I don't know why. Uh, but uh, I got a couple of them and started using them and uh, they really stick out at night. It's easier to see and during the day too. Um, and it just makes uh, fishing easier, especially when you're with new people who have a hard time uh, looking at the rods and telling when they're getting bit, if it's just a light bite or something like that. So I'm really liking the, the neon green lights or rods, lights, rods, and they really, really light up under black lights at night. Like my boat's a little bit too small to have all that on it because I've got a 10 inch depth finder hooked up to my cranking battery, so I can't hook a bunch of other stuff up to it. But I have friends who have these rods with the black lights on their boats and they just light the heck up. So these are the new Hellcuts. I've got two of the old ones in here that I had, but the ones that aren't all nasty and covered in fish are the older ones uh, or newer ones. I can't remember what I said, but yeah. So pretty ones new. 
<laughs> nasty looking ones old so uh, basically these are medium medium heavy and heavy actions um, I really like the medium one I know it's lighter but it's just really fun for me to fight fish on it if we're fishing heavy cover the heavies and the medium heavies work better or really heavy flow when you got to have bigger baits but uh so we've got that paired next to um, the older ones, which are black. They are awesome. If you don't like green or neon green, I've caught an ungodly amount of big fish on them the last year. Um, striper, musky, catfish, everything we've caught on them. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting these guys out on the water and uh, getting these new reels uh, in action and some drag peeling out of them. We are in the middle of the spawn right now, um, so that's not great for a cat fisherman. And that just makes it tough. And TVA hasn't been turning the current on until the middle of the day when it's literally 100 degrees here in East Tennessee right now. So I'm going to wait until the afternoon uh, when Brian gets off work. I've already caught Skip Jack. You saw that striper stuff from last night where I caught that big striper on top water. Well, I caught a cooler full of skipjack before that. And uh, I may get out a little bit earlier before Brian gets off and just go scan some new areas of the lake. I really want to find some uh, heavy cover trees, rock piles on the break line because that's what's been producing here lately. And uh, see if I can find some new places with that um, on Watts Bar. I'm going to be fishing on Watts Bar today. And uh, we're going to anchor up and fish that. We may do some drifting. We'll see, but I'm thinking we're going to anchor up on this really heavy cover where they can hide up in there and spawn and uh, hopefully pull one that's come off the spawn or um, hasn't gone on it yet off of that uh, submerged structure. So uh, that's what we're looking at here today. I'm going to go hit, get a haircut because I look a mess and uh, may go to the gym. We'll see. Probably not, though. It's my day off. And uh, we're going we gonna to catch some fish, hopefully. We may catch some stripers on cut bait. Uh, you never know with that. Also, the page is almost at 10,000 subscribers. Once we get to that 10,000 subscriber mark, I'm going to give away a couple of free rods and a bunch of free hats and stickers. So if you haven't liked or subscribed to the page yet, you need to go ahead and do that. And uh, once that happens, uh, once we hit 10K, um, well, I'm going to do a drawing based on some stuff, uh, some qualifications that you'll find out in a later video uh, for the free rods. And I may even do a free fishing trip. Now, you guys see me fishing with my friends and family all the time, and I do love fishing with other people. Um, but it's just hard for me to fish with everybody because I have a full-time job outside of fishing that takes a lot of my time. And, um, you know, I've had my friends and family I've been fishing with with forever. And, of course, they come first. So this will be a way uh, for you to get the opportunity to come out and fish with us and have a good time. And, uh, you know, uh, we may catch some fish. We may not. I don't know. You guys know me. I'll show it here on the channel. If it sucks, I'm still putting it up. If we catch two fish, okay. If we catch 100, even better. But uh, it's really about the adventure and having a good time. And uh, we are going on a, a summer catfishing adventure here this evening. And I really want to catch a big flathead. Like, we've been on that mission lately. Brian caught that 50-plus pounder, and I want to catch one over 60. So uh, that's what we're going for, baby. Stay tuned. We have made it down to the lake now, and we're going to do a little scout. And we're going to go try to find that deep water structure with the graph. We'll mark a bunch of waypoints. I'll kind of show you guys how to do that, or at least how I do it. I mean, I'm not the genius on this stuff, but I'm pretty good at it. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're doing a little fishing, baby, and it's hotter than blue blazes. I need to get some kind of padding or something for the deck because it's hot. Burns your butt. Yummy. Look where that striper took a giant dump in the bottom of my boat. So I've been out here graphing in the middle of the day because... It's bluebird skies. There's no flow right now, and it's just like the absolute worst time of the day to fish. So this is when I'm going to spend my time scanning the contours of the lake. And what I'm looking for right now are really sharp drop-offs, which are indicated by when these contour lines come really close together, that's when you know it drops. You see how it gets really dark right there? So if you're looking at a Navionics map, Obviously, we've got numbers saying it gets dark or deeper, but the closer these come together mean the faster, fast, the fastest, bleh, words. The closer they are together, the faster the bottom drops or gets deeper. So 
we're focusing on or targeting these really steep ledges and where I'm dropping a waypoint is where there's a tree or a rock or something like that on it. So that's what I'm doing and I'm gonna come up over the top of this one. Here in one second, I'm gonna back us back out here. I got real close, we up in the cormorant nest and there's bait everywhere, which is why these cormorants are out here. So that's also a good sign. There's just no flow right now, so I'm just gonna fish when I know it's better and that's when the flow kicks up later. So we're gonna turn side scan on here. See, look, that's all bait right there. That's why these cormorants are here. All this stuff, bait fish. And that's why them suckers are there because they, they feed on bait, okay? So that's a good sign. Nope. All right, there we go. So we're gonna go over top of this this waypoint here in one second. It's right on the edge of this point, which is why there's this contour ledge here. And uh, I'm not really looking for fish in particular on the stuff right now because there's no flow and they're probably just spread out and um, not concentrated on stuff. But uh, I am looking for the the, the rock piles, the trees, stuff like that. We're about to come up over it. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. See, we're getting real close here. It's gonna come up to the right. That's where that tree's gonna be. Let me switch back to my... So we're gonna zoom out here and we're about to see it here in a second. It's a big one. Now there are some fish on it. We should be getting pretty close here. Where is she at? Okay, you can kind of see it right here on that, so we're gonna go back to this. It may be a little farther out. I came in pretty close. And it's not picking it because it's on the picking it up because it's on the other side of the ledge where it drops and the beam just didn't hit it. So we're gonna come back out deep. Alright, we're in 27 right now. It drops off into about 40, 36, I think is what it was from what I remember. All right, there's a tree right there. You can see it. That's not the one I'm looking for, but that's one. I'm gonna come back and mark that. You can spot lock right in front of these or you can anchor and throw back to them. I like anchoring and throwing back to them because if the wind kicks up or boats come, it'll mess you up. Oh man, it's really, the sun's killing us right here. Let me put my head in front of it. Well, this ain't gonna work from this angle. Hope, please. All right, there it is, right there. That may actually be a rock pile, but uh, that's kind of what we're looking for right there. It's a big giant, just something odd on the bottom, and that looks like a paddlefish, right? Where is it? Right there. That's a paddlefish. Uh, there's that big rock pile right there. So now I'll put a waypoint on it, and then I'll change the waypoint icon to like a, a rock pile if it's a rock pile, or a tree if it's a tree, or just something like that so I know what it is while I'm running down the lake at, looking at stuff. And then you can start putting kind of a plan together on what you're getting bit on. I've been having fun targeting flatheads lately, so that's kind of what I'm going for right there. But big blue cats and stripers will sit on that too, so you never know. But that's what I'm doing out here now kind of give you an idea of what I do when the, the fishing's in the sucky part of the day. And uh, we're just doing some homework before we go fishing. So now we've got that mar guy marked right on the break on where it gets deep, drops off, boom, giant tree. That's money right there, especially if the current hits and there's actually current right here. I don't know if this area is a current break or not, so I'll just have to come back later when there is some. I've never fished here, but uh, I'm willing to bet that holds a couple monsters. I either found an old roadbed or some train tracks or something. I don't know what the heck that is. And then there's whatever this is out here. Spot number one we're setting up on is a tree right there in about 31 feet of water. And we're gonna come up above it. Look, there it is coming in the field right now. We're gonna anchor up above it right here, like up there, and then we're gonna cast down to it. Pretty simple. So we come up about 120 feet ahead of it. He's gonna throw this anchor. It's gonna take it a little while to get to the bottom. And then we're gonna let out about 30, 40 feet of line after it hits the bottom. 
so we're about 30, 40 feet in front of it. We are now within direct lobbing distance of it. So it's like right back there, not super far. So we ain't got to cast a mile. Ryan here is going to show us the rods we're using, the new Big Cat Fever Hellcat. These are the medium and medium heavy action style. This one right here is a medium. And we've got some medium heavies and then we've got a 400 size Komodo on all of them. 25 pounds of drag. She ready to catch some big old fish, baby. The 470. The 470. This can even hook up to your yeah. nice fancy. Uh, <laughs> Let's see the back of it. Fighting belt. Yeah. <laughs> Take it to the ocean with you. <laughs> All righty, let's get them. We gonna rock and roll with them out the back here. I'm gonna show y'all what we working with for bait here. We got the fresh Primo, the creme de la creme, the ribeye of the catfish world, the skipjack herring. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. You wanna learn how to catch these? I've got a ton of videos explaining how to do it in its own playlist. You can go check it out there, but uh, we're gonna chop these suckers up for big catfish and stripers. And I've caught bass bass on it too, but that's not super likely. So we're gonna get our spread out here behind us. That tree's right over there, about 50 feet behind the boat, somewhere in that area. So we're gonna spread it out right in front of it. And uh, you guys saw, I marked like 20 different trees. So we're, not, we're gonna bump pretty quickly unless we start getting bit. And uh, we're just gonna test a bunch of them out tonight. Uh, while we got tons of bait and uh, current all night and uh, hopefully not a lot of people out here. We're going to use some lighter weights. These are like two or three ounces and some heavier weights on the outside just to get our spread out correctly. And sometimes them catfish, like when they're not super active, they'll want a lighter weight on it, a lighter bite, more finesse. So we're going to put a few out with that and then a few out with the eights and maybe some out with tens way out in the middle of the channel so they just stick out there but the key here is to cut off one of your skipjack eyes and use it for bait for brim yeah and then use the head as a pirate bait yeah it works got that fresh blood that's what you want to see right there you want it to do that fresh cold not rotten you want it to bleed just like that straight on ice kept it on ice kept it drained it didn't sit there in water they're ready to go. Primo the primo. We ain't doing no ratchet bait here. Not for these flatheads. On these big head baits when I'm single hooking, I went up to a 10 knot hook and it seems to help a whole lot. Just get more hook gap exposed on it. I used to lose a lot of fish on the head bait without a double on it. Sometimes they don't want a big giant double, they just want the head. So I went up to this 10 knot and it seems to be helping. Seems to be helping. I'm still experimenting with it, so don't take that as gospel yet. Definitely seems to be effective. Now we don't gotta throw this a million miles because that tree's like right over there. 50, I think it said 55 feet back is what we're looking at. So we're gonna spread our rods out all around the tree. We're gonna give it 30 minutes on this spot and we're gonna bump down. Unless we just start getting slamming jamming, then we're gonna stay. So we'll see. When you get about this size on bait, that's when you wanna start using the double when it's past your hand size or even bigger. Cause sometimes they'll come up and just hit the back end and you won't get a hook up. Even the big fish, big fish can just grab the back end of it and swim off even though they could easily swallow a 10 pound carp. Sometimes they'll just go mouth it a little bit. This just ups your chances of yeah ups your chances of getting a hook up that stinger rig right there caught so many big fish with it guys it's a pain in the butt to tie sometimes it sucks when you lose it because you lost two hooks but man it works you gotta always use protection on these hookups yeah here he makes the pirate bait he's just convinced that this is why he caught a 50 plus pound flathead the last time we were on this area of the lake that's the only thing we did different two trips ago it's the only thing we did different so morbid <laughs> captain hook maybe it emits a different scent out of the eye socket you don't know yeah we'll see 
I'm gonna put this up in the danger zone of getting snagged. We're gonna lose tackle tonight. Like there's just no question about it. I'm gonna send this double one way the heck out in the channel as far as I can. And that current will just kind of wash it down to the break line. But that just gets us a good spread here. Any stripe or anything comes up this side channel, they're gonna run into our cut bait. And we've got shad flipping everywhere and it ain't even dusk yet. So that is a solid, solid sign. We got bait all over the place. Just catfish are spawning so it can be tough. We'll see what happens. Okay, we uh, we went a little too far and threw 10 rods out. Yeah, we got one more go. Oh, we're gonna do 11? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Why not? We got a cooler full of bait. All night to fish. Lots of rods, lots of bait, who cares? And there's no rod rules here in Tennessee, so we're just gonna throw it. We borrowed my uncle's net too. I just have to remember to put it back on, on his pontoon. <laughs> Come on, the fish, about our bait. Uh, I have been scanning this lake for literally five hours today, marking spots. I have earned it. You, think, sir. you got the bait clicker off? Okay. Yoink. There she goes. We fishing, boys and girls. Time to catch a big one. Brian is going to attempt to catch a bluegill on a skipjack eyeball. I don't know if this is going to happen. It looks pretty enticing to me. I don't know what's For a bluegill? Yeah. I mean, we'll find out, I guess. What's more of a quintessential catfishing snack? Mountain Dew or Doritos? I don't know. I think Mountain Dew. Well, your, your chip is a, is a personal choice. Mountain Dew is a staple. Yeah. Down, down. Whoa! That's on. That was not loose drag either. Holy crap. Try to get this off. This is a good fish. Guys, this just got annihilated. Like slam slammed. Like ripping lime. Pretty sure it's a cat too. Dude, that was down. I wish I had my camera going. That was almost to the water. Yeah. That rod tip was like wrapped around the motor on the initial hit. I'm just sitting there eating my Doritos. This is a cat. I don't know how big he is. He ain't doing anything now. He sure hit the fire out of it. Can you get my Doritos up? I'd like to have those tonight. <laughs> I've been out here for forever and haven't eaten anything. I'm just kind of chilling right now. bubbles back here? Yeah. Oh yeah, lots of bubbles. Just a mean teenager. He obliterated it. That's still a good flathead. That's a blue. That is a blue. I'm this side. It's a nice fish to start out. We, we ain't even 15 minutes in. And now he's deciding to fight. And then Webb, he got out. Yes, he did. He somehow got through. How did, like, we get a nice net and Webb somehow manages to unnet the fish. Now he's swimming off. This is a, an only a Webb moment. We still have a fish on there. Bill Dance 2.0. I don't know how they managed to do that. I don't know either because that is a gigantic I net. <laughs> I had him wrapped too. Now he's wanting to fight again. Here, I'm going to show him pull him back up. It made him mad now. Take two. There we go. How about we don't turn on the motor? 
That might be a 20 pounder. Oh, dude, look. What? Look at those spots like the last one we got off this one. What the heck? Why are they so nasty up here? This ain't even a nasty portion of the river. That's weird. Hmm. That fish ate a head bait. Very nice. That's a solid, solid fish. He's over 20. For sure. I guess I'll take a picture with him. He macked that head bait. I'm going to have to start sitting up front so I can have my camera facing this way when I'm eating my Doritos. Because I, I missed that hook set and it was glorious. Pull that head out. That's what he ate right there, guys. Big old head bait. Big old head bait. We're going to throw it back out there. Why not? Pull them off that tree. Put it back in the danger zone. Nice about 20 pounder, 20 something to start the night out with. That's a good fish. He was chilling on that tree. See ya. Brian's turn now. 50 pound flathead coming in hot. We pulled that one nice fish out of here, so we gonna keep moving. I marked better spots than this. This was just the first one we came across on our way to the other spots. So we're gonna reel up, move on down, baby. Try to get us another big one. You guys wanna check out these new Hellcats or purchase one or whatever from the Big Cat Fear lineup. I'll have a link down in the description below where you can either use the coupon code Cooper10 or click on the link itself. Well, I guess you'll have to use Cooper 10 at checkout, but basically you save 10% off your entire order purchase, no matter what it is. Even if you just need some wine, you can use that discount code and save you 10%, basically no taxes. So we'll see if, yeah, make some good leader line. I usually use braid, so I don't, I'm not a mono guy, but a lot of you guys are, so that's cool. They got some good mono in the, uh, Leader stuff is legit. That's what I'm using right now, 100 pound. So uh, we gonna get all these daggum rods in and move on down a little bit. As the sun goes down and the bite gets better, we're gonna move into the better spots. Brian gets the honors of uh, pulling the anchor all night. It's no longer Big Bertha though, so it's not as bad. It's just a normal center block. Boy, it's about to be a beautiful evening out here. About to have us a gorgeous sunset in about an hour. to this point i showed you guys earlier i found with that giant log pile and rocks and stuff on it i just don't know if there's current all the way over here or not it's kind of like a side channel i really hope there is because this is some of the best stuff i marked uh so fingers crossed there's that tree and as you can tell this is all bait right in here and these lighter marks with the shadows right here these are all big fish so this is a good sign Getting that anchor down, baby, and we roll them back. I'm gonna slow us down. We're going mock Jesus backwards. Man, I hope there's current over here. Please be current. I was telling Brian, if there's current, this could be a gangbuster spot. We're gonna throw the, the drift bucket out. So we don't have to throw a second anchor, hopefully. There is some flow, though. Do you want these on the bank or in the channel? I don't even know. Honest, I think it's just gonna get it's gonna get instant snagged if we throw it up there. I think there is not enough current to use drift bucket, so we're gonna have to double anchor. It looks like uh, we're gonna have to go at the second center block here, which sucks. But uh, we'll do what we got to do to get us in the money spot. I think this could be good. Basically, we're gonna scissor the or pinch the anchors together i threw this one out i'm gonna let some line out he's gonna pull that one tight and then they just pull tight all right go ahead brian well we got double anchored which i don't like having two anchors out because they can swim into it but it means we get to fish a spot we weren't going to be able to so we're going for it this one
I'm thinking channel two. We in the game, all the rods are out and we're already seeing predatory fish hitting all the bait that we saw on the graph on the surface and a lot of these mayflies. And uh, Brian's throwing the, the eyeball, trying to catch us some live bait. So uh, we'll see how that works for him. I'm convinced I can do it. I mean, you could probably put a little white grub on and catch a white bass. What's the difference? Then an eyeball in that, pretty significant. Look, that's getting hit right there. It is Brian's turn, so I'm gonna let him come get this. Oh, he put it down. Put it down, that was quick. We just got all the rods out. Looking at this guy right here. But yeah, that tree, that big pile of stuff's right there. The deep channel and holes out here. So they could really come from anywhere in here right now. All over the place. There's bait literally everywhere. Oh, that one, that channel. channel rod got hit. But uh, yeah, there's two bites real quick. They are both dink fish, but we may get a slam of jamma. We're gonna get a slam of jamma. Something's gonna happen here. I'm ready for a striper to come around. <laughs> if one hits over here, it's literally gonna swim left to right in all of our lines. So let's hope we hook him out there and he stays out that way. That would be ideal. Brian's got him a bite. What's he still on there? Oh, he just slid down. Put it down. Put it down. That one got hit right there. That one's getting hit again. I think he's swimming with that. Back one? Yeah. Just reel a couple slow cranks on him. Remember, that rod rack's messed up. We got to get that welded this week, so don't lean on it. Yeah, do that. Anything? Yeah. Is he on there? Yeah. You got him? Nice. Let me uh, not get his back. You got your fish there, Bree? Yeah. Little guy? Little guy. He's just a little feller. He's coming at you. That one was getting dinked on. Just a little feller. Man, he's tiny and he ate the whole bait. Oh, yeah, he was munching on it. It's a flipper. He's a flipper. Old boat flipper. Ah, ah. Look at that sunset, though. Something big gonna come around here in a little bit. We bring you a break from our regular scheduled fish fighting to enjoy the sunset. Not a skunk set. That one just got hit. What we got here, Brian? What we got? Little blue. Little blue. Little blue. Let him go. See ya. We got something going on here. Brian, you wanna take this phone? Bait. We had two going on. Got, Got him. Little feller. But we hooked up during the Mayfire apocalypse. There we go. Or he came off. Uh, Are he on? Do I have him? Yeah. He's just a little guy. Bro, this is the smallest blue cat. He ate a whole skipjack. Or tried to. We about to move. This is dumb. <laughs> Ain't nothing but small fish over here. There are no fish in this lake. None. That gun five pound blue cat. There we go. No five pounder. How about you stop? Yeah, 
Yeah, you got that back hook though. Or I got him with that back <laughs> hook. It be the spawn. You scared the white bass. Whoops. All right, we're going to need pliers for this one, guys. All right. Come here. Come here. Open your mouth up. Open your mouth up. Oh, I got a mayfly swimming in my butt crack. It hasn't gotten too bad yet. We're not getting like completely swarmed yet. I'm just gonna. Oh, there we go. We were trying to quick release them, y'all, and we did. Quit. Oh gosh, it begins. The mayfly on the catfish. Oh god. They're gonna be everywhere. All right, see you. Well. We got us one swimming with it. That's a head bait too. Yeah. Yeah, just slow reel on it. You still carrying it? That fish carried that thing forever. Where the heck is it? He carried it real far in here for sure though. Interesting. Well, a bite's a bite. Ryan may have a fish on. Yeah. You got him? Got him. Fish on, baby. Decent fish? Is that some drag? No, no drag. Oh, did he come off? Oh, came off. Yeah. Dang. Big head check. That was it. Dang. Well, we got a bite. Oh, he's on that double rig, too. Shoot. Dang it. No bueno. Mm -mm -mm. Do you feel good? These are kind of bendy. I don't know. It was, it was probably like a 20. But shoot, we better than that, huh? Go. Little guy. I heard he's coming straight at me. Well, he bent it all the way down. Yeah. What do we got here? What do we got here? Come on, grow on, grow on me when you get back. It's up here. He ain't growing on me. It's fish, though. Not much of one, but it's fish. Another dink on a double. Oh, quick release. Good. I didn't want to have to unhook him. <laughs> what you got there, Mark? I got a big old channel cat. I got a big old bobcat. <laughs> Brian's sitting here complaining because the fish aren't biting. His butt's wet. There's bugs everywhere. Oh my like, boy, shut up. We out here vibing. I don't need to hear no lip. I'm getting vibe checked right now. I can't even see you through the damn mayflies. Look, what... I'm going to guess it's a six pounder this time. Man, you never know. I'm sorry it's not a 53 pound flathead. Did your phone turn back on? No, I watch. I think it's a four pounder. Is it at least a channel cat? Are we switching it up a little bit? 
No, it's a blue cat. No, he's probably 10 pounds. Wow. <laughs> Really high stick in that rod. Yeah. Ah, he's a little bigger than what I thought. Yeah. There we go. Oh, he's in one of the lines. Yeah. That's good. Cool. You always want that when there's eight trees on the bottom behind us. Oh, look how tangled up it is, too. That's good stuff right there. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to see. 20 minutes of work to catch this 10 pounder. But Brian's butt's <laughs> wet and he's sad. Literally, like, 30 minutes ago, I was like, Brian, do you want this piece of beef jerky before we eat it? No, I'm not hungry. I ate a lot at work. I'm hungry, Mark. Can we leave? No! There ain't no damn fish in this lake. None. There is not a single catfish in Watts Bar Lake. Let's see, does this, all, does this one also have bumps all over it? Apparently. Oh! God, that hurt. Is he alrighty there? He bit the... That thing's got some teeth. Look at that. God, that hurt. There we go. Oh, don't bite me. Don't bite me. Ah. Goodbye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be a dude that hurt. Okay, you can turn the video <laughs> off now. It's a uh, a solid almost one a.m. out here. Ow! It ain't nothing going on other than that giant spotlight in my face. Thank you, Brian. So we just sitting here chilling right now. <laughs> And uh, the mayflies have subsided, at least for the moment. It's not as bad. But a uh, tough night to be a catfisherman during the spawn. We giving it our all, though. Give it a few more minutes and we're going to pack it up. We don't get anything else. We both getting tired. And I'm hungry. Brian's getting a bite. <laughs> Turn that clicker off. <laughs> You gonna catch a fish this time? I think you already put it down, actually. Oh, brutal. Did you put it down? Yeah. Ah, Brian! You Hulk looking. <laughs> Got a mayfly, though. <laughs> hey, think, good. Wait, did we swim together? No. No. Let's see what we got. Is that a hook crawl? No. No. Turtle? Turtle. <laughs> We're like loopy tired now. No, just that actually looks like a decent bite. Yeah. See no I scale on the tip. Just missed it. You want to throw it back out there or you want to call it? Yeah, I'll throw it back out there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's been up for 24 hours. Everything is fine. <laughs> Hulk smash. Got this green light that is a little bit better for with mayflies, but you know, it doesn't do anything for shit fish. 